Okay, so today I wanna to go over molecular formulas. So molecular formulas, you might think of these as a true formula because they describe the actual number of atoms in a compound. So here we have an empirical formula of CH3. The molecular formula might be for the C2H6. So like this was something we talked about the other day. So here you see this is not the smallest whole number ratio, but does describe that in our molecule, we have two carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms. This CH3 is the lowest whole number ratio. So we're gonna go over how chemists would get from the, molecular, from the empirical formula to the molecular formula. So the first step when you're doing these kind of problems is to find the empirical formula just like we did. Then we're gonna find the empirical formula molar mass or formula mass. We're then gonna divide the molecular mass that will be given to us in a problem by the empirical mass that we just calculated. And then we're gonna multiply each subscript in our empirical formula from by the answer that we got in step three. So like I said, the molecular mass is gonna be given to you you have to calculate the empirical formula mass. Okay, so here is just a very simple example of this. Here they've already found the empirical formula. Uh, we're given the molecular mass and the problem that's 28.1. We have to calculate the empirical formula mass or empirical molar mass if we calculate that for CH2, it will be 14.03 grams per mole. And then we divide these two, the molecular molar mass is on the top, the empirical molar mass is on the bottom. We get an answer of two. And then our formula, our molecular formula would be C2H4 because the empirical formula goes into the molecular formula two times. Okay, so this is a problem that we did the other day. Um, actually, no, we didn't do this one the other day, so let's go through this. So let me get out of this. And here, we're gonna go through and figure out the empirical and the molecular formulas. So I wanna go through the steps so you guys can see how this works. So notice here, they give us the grams and they give us the percentages. So we don't have to use this 42 grams. This kind of extra information. We're just going to start with these percentages, assuming that we have a 100 gram sample. Therefore, 40 grams is carbon, 6.7 grams is hydrogen, and 53.3 grams is oxygen. So we're going to convert each of those grams into moles. So 40 grams is carbon, 6.7 grams is hydrogen, and 53.3 grams is oxygen. And remember, each of these is over one, so we're gonna use the molar mass in each case to get that into moles. Again, the grams cancel out, and we should be getting moles in each case. So in the first case, we get 40 divided by 12.01. That gives us 3.3306 moles. Second case, we get 6.7 divided by 1.008. That gives us 6.6468 moles. In the last case, oops, Last case, we get 53.3 divided by 16, and that gives us 3.3313 moles. So we see here the smallest one is that 3.3306, so we're going to divide each of these by that. So 
So the first subscript will be one. Second one be will be two. And the third one be one. So we get for our empirical formula C one H two O one. So now we're going to find the molar, the molar mass of this empirical formula. So we have 12.01 plus 2 times 1.008 plus 16. And that gives us 30.026 grams per mole. If we take 90 divided by 30.026, that gives us three. So our molecular formula, so this is going to be our empirical our molecular formula would be C three H six O three. Okay, so that's um, one example. With the second one, I want to look at one we did the other day for ibuprofen. And let's go back and look at our problem for ibuprofen from the other day. That one we found at C13H18O2 is our empirical. So with this problem here, we're now going to find the molecular. So we have c 13 h 1802 is our empirical. So again, we're going to calculate the molar mass of our empirical. So we have 13 times 12.01 plus 18 times 1.008 plus 2 times 16. And this gives us for our empirical molar mass 206.274. Now notice here that our empirical molar mass is the same as our, mol our molecular molar mass. This means that N in this case is equal to 1 because 206 divided by 206.274 is basically 1. So our molecular formula will also be c 13 h 18 O2, so they are identical, and that can happen. Okay, guys, so I want you to try some empirical molecular formulas on that worksheet.